Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming changes to Alliance War and Alliance Quest. First, here is a short roadmap of what Kabam has shared with us thus far. Okay, um, you can read it here as I'm talking about it. But first thing, they're going to be delaying book two act one after all the feedback from the beta that they got they said they're taking a step back and they're going to reevaluate the direction what they want to do uh and so on as a result of taking a step back and delaying that they've actually pushed up back issues five now that's variant five for you guys that may not be aware of what back issues means all right uh, it was originally planned for September, as you read there, um, but they're going to now have it in August. Still not, you know, uh, close enough for a lot of our tastes, but this is the best that they can do. All right. Now, there are some changes to Alliance Quest that we will discuss a little bit later in the video. Um, so what you're seeing there. Alliance uh, ticket system, we're going to talk about that after we talk about the changes to Alliance War. Now, many of you already know I do not like Alliance War, and I doubt any of the changes that they are likely to make is going to change my mind. But they can do things that make it a little bit better. Okay, so you can read here, early June, they'll be giving Alliance Quest a mid-season mid revamp. Uh, again, more on the uh, ticket system, but Alliance Quest is getting a facelift, okay? Now, that second paragraph, these updates have been in the works for several months. That's important because a lot of people wonder, is Kabam just out of touch? Because they'll make these changes in the midst of maybe some other turmoil, and people will be like, this just shows that they're out of touch. No, it shows that you don't understand the development process. A lot of these things were already in the works before any current unrest, crisis, anything, uh, whatever it is, took place. And so they're just following their roadmap scheduled out. Now, the timing may be horrible. You know, at the time that they're ready to release it, it may be where, you know, there's a lot of customer unhappiness. That happens sometimes, but not always. So it's important to, you know, just bring that out. Uh, I'm not apologizing for Kabam's lack of communication or anything like that, but I do understand the development process being a developer myself for over 20 years. So I know how those things go, all right? So now here is the, uh, or are the improvements to the Alliance Wars, okay? The defense tactics, you guys know the pain, especially flow. You know, that was so annoying. It still is. They made some changes. Most of us hate it. Defense tactics were supposed to increase diversity. That's not what they did. And Kabam knows this. And so they're making some changes. Okay, you can see there it says that it has not met the goals. All right, so this season... We're not going to see any changes, but for next season, we will. So one of the things that's going to happen is attackers are going to get a bonus when they meet the criteria uh, for the defense tactic. So in other words, defense tactic will benefit both the defender and the attacker. All right. So say you're going up against magic and the opponent has uh, chosen flow as a defense tactic. Well, if you go in there with a control champion, like say you wanted to fight magic with magic, you're going to receive a benefit as well. So the defense tactics are going to affect you as well as affecting the defender, probably in different ways. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but it will be some sort of positive effect. All right. And they gave that example. All right. Now, here's something that I find 
uh, interesting, and it's going to help out a lot of the leadership, alliance leadership tools. Okay, so one of the changes that I remember reading here uh, that I liked was the top champions. We've used external tools in order to uh, help our leaders and the officers plan a good defense. You know, you want to have good diversity. So we have all these diversity tools. I myself made one uh, and we would use that. Everyone had to put in their champions and all of that. But what they're adding is the ability in game to set all of that up so that officers, if they need to plan things out, they can just look at it in game and you've already set it up. So instead of us having to um, use some external tool or take screenshots of your roster and then upload them to an album on Line Messenger or somewhere, this is a much more convenient uh, method. It's going to be built in. So I like it. Uh, the other thing that I liked was the designation of battle groups for each member. So you're in battle group two for Alliance War. Maybe you're in battle group one for Alliance Quest. Who knows? Um, what you're going to be able to do as a leader, uh, officer, is designate each person and assign them to a battle group. And what that means, it's not going to keep them from joining a different battle group, but they're going to get warnings now. The battle group that they have been assigned to will be highlighted. So that should cut down on people joining the wrong battle group while still allowing people to, you know, join, giving that flexibility. So I like it. I like that a lot. All right. Um, next thing is the abyss. And if I've missed anything in here, that's why I'm letting you guys uh, read it along with me. So you'll read all the information. I may not mention every single point. Uh, they're going to be updating the rewards for the Abyss. I still haven't set foot in there. Um, don't have any plans to, especially not until I get an Aegon. All right. So they're just updating the rewards for full exploration. People who have already fully explored it will still get whatever the rewards updated are. Okay. Um, and then here we go. And this is basically just their summary on this updated roadmap. Okay, so that's what we are able to uh, share with you at this time for the roadmap. And I'm still going to talk to you about uh, the Alliance ticket system as well. But that's all I have for the changes to Alliance War, the Alliance uh, Quest tools. And uh, it's not going to be a magic bullet. You know, it's not going to address everyone's concerns. A lot of these things have already been in the works months before uh, this current discussion about burnout and everything occurred. So they're going to still be making plans in the future. This is just what they already had in the works. All right. So we'll be back and I will talk to you guys about Alliance Quest and the Alliance ticket system. Okay, so here's the big change to Alliance Quests. And if you guys know me, you know that I really love Alliance Quests. So I was very keyed in to what they were going to be doing to Alliance Quest. All right, so starting in June, they're going to be doing away with the Alliance Treasury. That's a pretty big change, okay? They're going to be introducing a new method to enter the maps. And that's where Alliance tickets come in. So basically, um, you're going to have to purchase your tickets yourself. All right, nobody can purchase the tickets for you. So that actually changes a lot of stuff. You know how I have currently a deal going with my Alliance mate. You know, he didn't want to have to use uh, battle chips because he did not uh, grind a lot of arena. So I paid his battle chips. 
he pays my gold and my units, or not my units, but my gold and the loyalty. And he usually spends units uh, to get those into the treasury. Well, that's not needed anymore. And what that means is that I can now, and you can read it here, uh, I can now decide what resource I want to use to purchase these tickets, because you can purchase the tickets with different resources, you know, your battle chips, your loyalty, your gold or units. OK, you can do that and purchase these tickets, but everyone has to do it individually. OK, and in case you are curious as to why, it should be obvious. Um, three major purposes give more autonomy over the resources you use to enter Alliance quests. OK, reduce the cost of running Alliance quest maps. All right, those are both benefits. Put a stop to fraudulent and illicit activities like resource loaders. Now, if you don't understand what resource loaders are, let me explain. And I'm not proud of this. I've been part of Alliance where we do this because the costs are so high, I'm not making any excuses for it. Um, but this is what happens. You get a group of people who have a lot of loyalty. Now, what you want to do if you're responsible is you go to people who you know earned it legitimately because you have people that are not legitimate. You get them and then you get them to join the alliance and donate to the treasury, all of that. And you may pay them in money, okay? So, what an alliance will do is they will ask everyone, all right, who's going to pay for, you know, this loyalty, battle chips, you know, basically pay for donations. You'll collect the money, you'll pay the person, and that person will then get invited to the alliance. And along with, you know, whoever is helping them with, you know, depending on how they spread it out, because uh, one person may have several accounts, they'll all come into the alliance and dump the resources, all right? So the first thing Kabam tried to do to put a stop to that is to add timers, all right? That did not really stop it. Um, all that did was create or create a um, another option. What we would do there is create a shell account, all right? A shell alliance. And... Everyone in one alliance will go to the other alliance, except for, you know, a few that, you know, are controlling the alliance on the other side. Then you invite those folks in. It'll take them the timeout period that Kabam had uh, put in place. You know, I think it was a week. And then they would donate. And when they were done, then everyone on the other alliance once that season was over or whatever, it would come back to that alliance with the treasury all stacked and they had already paid. And then for the shell alliance, do the same thing. They would go over to that one, you know, everyone would pay. And so you wouldn't have a problem, all right? But that is not intended. Kabam tried to put a stop to it, but they couldn't technically uh stop you from doing stuff like that because what you're doing even though it violates the spirit of what they wanted and desired the system allows for it so what they've done now is they have changed the system and one of the reasons as you see there is to put a stop to that because now you can't do that because everyone that's going to participate in the map has to buy their own ticket. So you can't purchase mercs or anything like that to come in and donate. But they've also removed the reason that a lot of people were doing that. All right. So let's keep going here. All right. So look at that. Alliance tickets can be purchased for gold, battle chips, loyalty units, or in the unit store, okay? So I like what they've done. A lot of times Kabam will treat a symptom, but without providing 
a real solution to the problem. Because the whole reason people were doing all of that resource loading and everything was because the Alliance Quest maps were too expensive and you have a lot of people that hate Arena. So therefore they don't have the battle chips needed for the donation. But yet you have to have battle chips, gold and loyalty in order to run the maps. So you would try to do all kind of deals and everything. You have people that have a lot of gold and a, and a lot of uh, units, or they would just buy units to donate, but it's much cheaper to do it uh, with the resource loaders because it was so expensive. Well, with this system, you get to choose. So like in my situation, I have currently, and it's not that much, but I know it's more than a lot of you have, I have like 54 million gold right now. And I use it basically just for rank ups. I still earn gold and everything. Um, I know my friend uh, Big Blue has more than double that. I think he might have triple uh, that amount, okay? And so we have a lot of gold. What I don't have is loyalty but I have a lot of battle chips because I stay in the arena. But I don't want to spend too much uh, of my battle chips because that's also where I get units. So this system means that I don't need to make a deal with someone else and I don't spend to buy units and I don't purchase um, donations, by the way. So instead of having to make a deal with an alliance mate, I can now choose my own resources. So I can get tickets and if I'm trying to save up uh, my units, like, you know, 4th of July is coming soon and I'm trying to save those up, then I can just use gold and save because my battle chips will give me units and I don't want to use units. Um, I can also use some loyalty if I have loyalty uh, to use, I can uh, spread it out. And that's actually what they recommend, okay? So they talk about it here. You can read it there, okay? Now, what happens to the treasury? You can see here, and this is what I was mentioning earlier, okay? Um, starting today, so when you're watching this, starting today, you will no longer be able to donate to your Alliance treasury. That is a change that's going in immediately that I referred to earlier, okay? But June 3rd, uh, you'll get an in-game message, uh, contains some of those tickets. Uh, that's the equivalent to the last five months of donations in excess of your regular map costs, okay? Regardless of which alliance you donated them to, all right? And by the way, you take your tickets with you. So say you were in an alliance, and you purchased, you know, a bunch of tickets because you know you were going to do map seven. And then you got kicked from the alliance or you left. Well, whatever you didn't use, you just use in the next alliance. That is awesome. I actually like this change. OK, um, you also will get two free series of alliance quests while we moved uh, to the new uh, ticket system. All right. May, May 25 to June 7 no map costs. Awesome. Okay. Now here's how much they're going to cost. Cause I know you're wondering, you know, they talking about reducing the cost and, and all that good stuff. Okay. It ramps up like in the glory store. So the more you purchase, the more expensive it is. So you want to balance that out. Um, and it gives you an example. If you purchased 150, uh, which is one week of map seven, and spread them out equally between gold, battle chips, and loyalty, which they do recommend you do. Um, it would cost you 366,576 gold, 37,963 loyalty, and 48,305 battle chips. Uh, I don't remember my exact donation cost because I pay, you know, double battle chips for my alliance mate but I believe that's a reduction. It may not be a huge reduction, but I believe that is a reduction in the cost for a week of um, map seven. And the nice thing is, if you purchase those 150 for a week, 
And for whatever reason, you left the alliance, whether they kicked you, you take the rest of your tickets with you. That is very nice. See, the current system, that's not, once you donated to the alliance, it was the alliance. So I guess it's becoming more individualized rather than the whole we're alliance and we're pooling our resources together. Uh, and it's in response mostly to the abuse of that system. Okay. Uh, now the cost to purchase with units does not scale. So the other ones scale as you purchase more. Uh, but with units, it'll only cost three units each. Okay, so if you just want to use units and you want to purchase the 150, it's going to always cost you uh, the same amount. What is that? Um, 450, I think. Did I do that math right? Um, well, 450, uh, let's see, 150 alliance tickets, uh, three each. So that's 150, 150 is 300. Um, and then another is 450, right? Hope I did that right. Anyway, um, so it'll always cost you that. Um, if I did that math wrong, my excuse is it's early in the morning when I'm making this video. All right. Anyway, uh, so here you go. And, and it says to compare. And it says, please don't do this unless you have a lot of resources in, uh, you know, a lot in one resource. Um, those same 150 tickets with only gold would cost 1.3 million. So it's still better to spread out the cost. But guess what? Like he said, if you have a lot of one resource. So with 54 million, say I want to save my units, save my battle chip, save my uh, loyalty. I can just use up 1.3 million. Boom. And I'm good. Love it. I'm loving this. All right. And at the bottom, you have the timeline for all of that. May 22nd, which is today, um, donations no longer, uh, you no longer have the ability to donate to your treasury. Two weeks of free Alliance quests from May 25th to June 7th. June 3rd, summoners will receive an Alliance ticket refund. June 10, Alliance tickets are usable for Alliance quest map six, seven, map five is going to be free permanently. All right, so that's going to do it, guys. Hopefully, this is informative. Leave a comment. Uh, I will be streaming, but this is going to most likely go live while I'm streaming. So we'll probably be able to talk about it maybe next week. But feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you think about this change, because this is a pretty big change to Alliance Quest. And while I'm not free to talk about other changes, there are other changes uh, coming. All right, so that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. And you all have a blessed day.